If we're interested in flow in pipes, the first step would probably be to tackle a steady flow fully developed in a pipe that's a simple round pipe. So if this is our pipe and we've got a long distance upstream here uh, before we get to this segment of pipe, then we'll expect to have a fully developed velocity profile that looks something like this based on our observations of the way flow behaves in pipes and maybe based on some insight from flow between parallel plates. We don't know the details of that velocity profile but the flow is moving in this direction in the x direction. Now to solve a round pipe the obvious coordinate system to use is a, uh, a polar cylindrical coordinate system radius outwards from the center theta direction around the uh, uh, diameter of the pipe and x along the pipe and let's make it in the direction of the flow so that it's, it's uh, easy to manage the signs. If we go to any fluid mechanics textbook we can find the incompressible continuity equation in polar coordinates. So we've got a, uh, an equation that has three terms. This is the divergence of velocity equal to zero just as we have in Cartesian coordinates but we pick up some elements because of the polar nature of the coordinate system. So if we take that continuity equation and we say that the flow is two-dimensional, that is nothing interesting is going on in the theta direction. So di di theta, whoops, di v theta, di theta is equal to zero because the flow is two-dimensional. And going along in the x direction, if we've got a long distance upstream here, then the flow will be fully developed and the velocity won't be changing in the x direction. So if the flow is fully developed, that term goes to zero. And we're left with just 1 over r di by di r, r v r equal to zero. Or, if we look at that, then r v and integrate over the radius, then we wind up with r v r equal to some constant. This is similar to what we saw when we did the analysis in Cartesian coordinates for parallel plates. If r times vr is equal to a constant and at r equal to capital R, the radius of the pipe, the, uh, uh, the velocity is zero, nothing's going out through the pipe, then that RVR must be equal to zero everywhere or VR equal to zero. And that's what we expected. The only velocity component of consequence is the one that's going in the X direction because this is a steady, fully developed flow. So now we can take the X-momentum equation. It has the same components that we're used to seeing in the Cartesian coordinate system except with some 1 over R's. To, uh, to account for the fact that it's polar. And we can simplify this equation. First off, the time derivative goes away because the flow is steady. Next, we've got this vr di u di r term, and we know that vr is equal to zero. So that goes away. We've got this term, di u di theta, di u di theta, just like di v theta di theta, nothing is changing in the theta direction. The flow is 2D axisymmetric. And di u di x, the flow is fully developed, so that term goes to zero. Pressure gradient, we will have a pressure gradient. We don't know what it is yet, but we do have a pressure gradient. Gravity, well, I've drawn it horizontal, so let's cancel that out. And now we get to these viscous terms. Di 2u di x squared, well, di u di x and di 2u di x squared are both equal to zero because the flow is fully developed. Di 2u di theta squared, because it's two-dimensional, that one's also equal to zero. 
So all we're left with are the di P di X term and the viscous term for shear associated with changes in velocity in the R direction. So the important things that are going on here are the velocity gradients as we go out from the center of the pipe. And again, that's as we would have expected. So if we take this and uh, get rid of the crossed out terms, we wind up with mu over rho, 1 over r, di by di r, r, di u, di r. So that's all of this stuff equal to, and the negative sign will disappear because we're taking it to the other side, 1 over rho, di p, di x. If we want to solve this, we'll need to rearrange it so we can integrate it. The densities will cancel out. And if we take mu and r over to the other side, we'll wind up with di by di r, r, di u, di r, whoops, not di x, di r, equal to r over mu, di p, di x. If we integrate that once, we'll wind up with r di u di r equal to r squared over 2 times, whoops, over 2 mu times di p di x plus some constant c1. Now, di u di r equal to 1 over r r squared over 2 mu di p di x plus c1. or di u di r equal to r over 2 mu di p di x plus c1 over r. And di u di r has to be finite everywhere. There's no infinite velocity gradient. Therefore, if we got to r equal to zero at the center here, c1 over r would give us an infinite velocity gradient. That's clearly not true. So, our boundary condition, or our, our requirement, our physical requirement that di u di r finite everywhere and particularly finite at r equal to zero, leads us to c1 equal to zero. Integrating again, we wind up with u equal to r squared over four mu di p di x plus c2. Now, looking at that and having the boundary conditions that uh, the velocity is equal to zero at the walls, we wind up with u equal to negative one over four mu di p di x so there's the 1 over 4 mu di p di x. It's got an r squared term in it. And in order to meet the boundary condition, 
we wind up with r squared minus r squared. So here's our term. Negative and negative cancel out. That's r squared over 4 mu di p di x. And here's the C2 term coming in to meet our boundary condition. So with our requirement that u equals 0 at r equal to r. So we've got this equation for our velocity profile in our pipe.